Morning everybody, oh, just about anyway, well thanks for turning out, uh, wherever we've been right, it's absolutely chucked it down and been freezing and windy, we come to Brighton, we get the sunshine and blue skies, so we're really happy to be here, we're really happy to be here, um, we'll give it our best shot, we know what we're doing here, we're representing a beautiful community, we're trying to raise some, raise some awareness and some funds to try and find a cure, but we're also trying to change how people feel people feel about the MND community and how people feel about each other. It's not about running marathons this, I know our team are doing them today, but it's about just trying to find a little bit where you can help somebody. And if you can do that in the run up to Christmas, we've done our job. We'll do our best today for you, we're really looking forward to running it. And I can't thank you enough for the support you've brought. Thank you. We'll see you Well, good afternoon, Brighton. Yeah. It's supposed to be 6th of December, it's like the 6th of July. Who's brought this for us today? Yeah. Thank you. We've been in wind, we've been in rain, we've been in snow, we've been in hailstorm, and we come here and you give us this. So, yeah. thank you very much. Um, we love you, Ken. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Look, the, the team have really enjoyed being here. We got in at midnight last night, and everybody's been so welcoming and been fantastic with us. We've loved running around the city, it's been brilliant. We've had a great time, um, please come and join us on this mile, it does not matter how fast or how slow you go, it's about doing it together. As soon as we finish we'll carry on because we're 5k from home so uh, we're going to get this finished and in time. But what I will say to you is, um, what we've done the last few years as a team has been about raising awareness, and raising funds for this beautiful community that's in front of me. But what I would say to you all is you do not have to run marathons, 
just do your little bit. Just help in some way. There's always someone a little worse off than you who needs our help. And this community is a beautiful one and they need us. So let's keep fighting together and let's get running together, all right? really kind um, to welcome us like you have it's really important that remember the team I'm part of um, I came from a rugby environment which is where I met Rob and that teammate and camaraderie the fact you look after each other through thick and thin is very much apparent in the team that I'm part of today so without them doing their little bits means we don't get day six completed um, we did get in well midnight last night and you toss and turn in your bed. You've had about four hours sleep, we're up and we're out, and um, we've got it done. So, testament and credit to that group there. Um, I can't thank them enough. We've been here, I've been here a couple of times with England this year, and it's been a privilege to come and, and work at this college whilst coaching here. And when we were plotting which cities we'd like to visit, we needed somewhere in the south and straight away we wanted to come to Brighton because of our experience, or my experience here at the college, but also because of your former teacher, Pete Bellinger. When I walked through the door for the first time, it was the first thing I was greeted with. Um, there was a guy here who was a, an absolutely awesome teacher who had MND, and the pupils thought the world of him, and straight away there was a connection. I thought, I'd love for us to come back and one day maybe be able to address you. Um, why are we doing it? We're trying to raise awareness for this disease. There's 5,000 people in the UK with motor neuron disease and my good friend Rob Burrow was diagnosed just, just under four years ago. 50% of those diagnosed die within two years. It just takes people very, very quickly. We've got to try and change the dial and shift it so that we can start finding drugs 
to slow that down and to help, but also to find a cure. And then there's that human side where we have to look after those who are diagnosed. We have to look after them better than what we currently do. And then probably my, my message to you all is, and, and from the team, I'm delighted to say we've hit half a million pounds today as we come into Brighton. Which, which will make such a difference to the MND community. But actually, it, it's gone deeper than that. This is our fourth challenge. And how do you measure success? Is it the money we raise? Is it the eyeballs we get on this disease? Or is it how we make people feel? And actually, the conclusion is it's how we make people feel. The fact that you're all here today, the fact that people have lined the streets for us wherever we've gone, the fact that we've had the support means that people across the UK care and feel deeply about this community and I ask one thing of you which is all we've tried to do you don't have to go and run seven marathons but actually we need to help those who are less fortunate than us who need us and that MND community really really need us so I thank you for your support today I thank Brighton and I thank everybody connected with Brighton College because you've been awesome Hi guys, good evening everyone. Uh, thank you for having me again. It's, it brings back fond memories uh, coming back here and um, I guess some of my fondest memories were out in the sports field, not so much in the classroom, but um, for me, Mr. Bellinger was, was the heartbeat of the school. I know you taught my two younger brothers and uh, they couldn't have a high, any higher words to speak about him. Um, he'd always turn out every weekend, come and support us, whether that's football, rugby, cricket. He'd always have the biggest smile on his face and uh, like I said, he was a massive part in the school, and, and I know, Kev, um, how inspirational you are arriving here at the school. I know it's touched the school deeply. Um, I know all the staff, all the pupils who've, um, I guess, been at the school when, when Mr. Burns were here will be, will be supporting you through every other challenge you're going to do, and I know that he'll be watching from above. So um, I just want to say to you and the team, thank you very much. I guess, firstly, for choosing Brian, it, it means a lot to me and my family, and I know it means a lot to the school as well. So uh, thank you very much to everyone, and um, let's, let's make sure we keep supporting them. And um, so we, we're gonna finish in a moment with hopefully something really upbeat um, to, to conclude today. It's been a really special day for us I know it must have been an absolutely exhausting day for Kevin, so I don't want to hold him uh, too long away from getting a shower and proper rest and, and some food. But um, just before we do that, I, I've been in touch with um, Mr. Ballinger's family quite a lot today. They were really sad they couldn't be here, um, but they, they live quite far away and, and Pete's parents especially are quite elderly now, but they've been following it and have been so touched and so moved um, by all that you've done, but especially pupils from all that you have been part of and it means so much to them that Pete isn't forgotten and that the legacy that he left for us here in this school which really touches on everything Kevin said about how we look out for each other how we have each other's backs and and when we need some support that we've got people around us who can give us that support um, at, at Pete's memorial service somebody read some words from an old Lennon Cohen um, song which I just thought were good, good in this moment. Uh, Leonard Cohen wrote these words, ring the bells that still ring, forget your perfect offering, there's a crack, a crack in everything, that's how the light gets in. And I guess um, the point was, and, and this is really what Pete modelled, not actually just when he had the diagnosis, although especially after that point, but even from when he arrived in 2013, he modelled I guess that sense of vulnerability is okay, that it's okay not to be perfect. Uh, that's sort of how the light sometimes gets in. And that it's okay to say to somebody around us that we need some help or that things aren't quite right. And uh, that's the starting point, I guess, for what Kevin's spoken about. That courage that each of us might sometimes need to say, like Pete had to do, it was forced on him. He had to say, I can't do this anymore, I need some help. And then people gathered around him. But that, I guess, is a, an encouragement for each of us too. The other thing I wanted to mention, which I think isn't gonna quite work as well as I planned, because when I had this in my mind, it was gonna be basically pitch dark at this point. 
but you're gonna have to just imagine that. But I think almost all the pupils are holding a little light. I just wonder if you could hold it up quite high for a moment. Um, yeah, in my mind it was gonna be a lot darker than this. <laughs> um, but that's okay. Um, I, um, I just wanted to say a quick thing about hope because um, for the, uh, the MND community, and we're really privileged that a number of the Sussex MND guys are here with us, and, and it's so amazing to have you here where the challenge that we recognize is every day, every night, and it's really tough. And sometimes I know from walking with Pete in the tough times, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of hope. And um, maybe if you could just imagine, in fact, let's just do it, if you could turn all your lights off for a moment and then hold them up again. Because there were moments in Pete's um, life with MND when it really felt like there wasn't a lot of hope and um, you know I don't think he would mind me saying that there's some really tough times and then actually sometimes somebody came alongside him and it just felt like one little light going up and that was one person maybe doing something kind often actually it was pupils here um, at the time who went out of their way to talk to him or to make sure he was being looked after uh, people decorated his flat, they redid his kitchen, um, and they were like little lights just turning on around him, showing him that he wasn't on his own. And, um, and actually, that's all it comes to. So if you turn your lights on again and hold them up, um, that's sort of a, an indication, I think, from what I've understood of what this week for Kevin is all about. It's like going the extra mile just means that we just do our bit. We can all only hold up one little light, and it might feel like it's not very significant, but actually when we all do that, when we all go the extra mile, it amounts, if you look around you, it amounts to something quite special. And that's where there's hope for all sorts of situations, but that's where there is hope for the community of MND sufferers and carers. And that's where there's hope for the future. As Mr. Cairns has said a few times, we would love it out of this group. We would love it for those of you studying science in that building behind us, that there might be treatments and cures that come from research that one day you undertake because there's a little light of hope that's lit in this moment for some of you guys.